Now, William Tapley provided a proof that he's a true prophet. And he said that he's a true prophet because Satan attacks him. Well, that kind of goes against the evidence that we see in the Bible. We see that the Pharisees and the Sadducees both were whitewashed tombs. They both were a den of vipers, but they attacked each other. So they belonged to Satan, but they were free to attack each other. And to just look at the physical ignores the place where the true warfare exists, and that is in the spiritual. Satan has no loss if he can raise up two groups of men to attack each other, defame each other, and cause each the other group to have suffering, discord, cognitive dissonance, to go home and cry, to then abuse their wife because of the abuse they took from the other leader. It doesn't matter. Satan is happy to delude two groups into hating each other to attack. Because those men, they're the objective of Satan's destruction. They're the eye of his anger. He wants to destroy the men. So there's no conflict to say that false prophets attack other false prophets. And in fact, I have a video in my repertoire, uh, a message that the Holy Spirit shared with me, that false prophets do attack other false prophets. You can go look at that video, but I'll sum it up here. They attack other false prophets because they believe if I attack this other false prophet, and I call him a false prophet, then people will assume that one of us is right and the other is wrong, and that therefore I will appear to be a true prophet of God. And that's their thinking. And the obverse is not true. And since that thinking is wrong, the obverse also is not true that if one person is attacked, that he's a true prophet and the other people are false. Okay, that's, those, that's uh, logical fallacies. Those, those two things are not true. Now, what does a true prophet have? A true prophet does what all other prophecy in Scripture does. He directs to Jesus Christ. And only to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the only Lamb of God. The only sacrifice for the redemption of our spirits to heaven. When we come to Christ, our spirits are sealed unto the day of judgment. And that is the only way that that comes to pass. Now, let's listen as William Tapley explains... How someone's going to get into heaven? You're not going to believe this. Oh, no. I know I use terms like Protestant and Catholic. Okay. But in the end times, there will only be two groups. Those who take the mark and those who refuse. There will be Catholics who take the mark and Catholics who refuse. The same with Protestants. And in fact, the same with any other religion. Orthodox, Buddhist, Islam, it doesn't matter, or Jews. Some will take the mark and some will refuse. Even atheists. Some atheists will refuse to take the mark because they value freedom more than slavery. They will be saved. Those who take the mark will go to hell. There you go, people. That's it. If you take the mark or not, that's how you get into heaven or get into hell. An atheist refuses the mark, rejects Jesus, he's getting into heaven. Would any true prophet of God ever make such a statement? The answer is Niet, nine, nya, -uh, never. He would never ever do such a thing. People, there's only one salvation, one exoneration from sin, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified, which is what Paul said he wanted to preach more than anything else. People, that is how you are saved through the blood of Jesus. Now, if you, the Bible clearly states that if you take the mark, you are out. So, Simply refusing the mark does not get you into heaven. You have to have both of those things. Jesus, because here's the way people say, well, wait a minute, that's a bit of a contradiction. But here's the reason people won't understand that. It says, because in our English Bible, it says that you must believe. Now, the Hebrew word believe meant that you must believe it in your mind, but also believe it in your heart in such a way that your life changes. And if you take the whole of the Bible and all of scripture together, scripture together, you will see Jesus says, if you do love me, you'll obey my commands. Now we have to know Christ. We have to follow him. In another place, Jesus says, I never knew you. And those people don't enter heaven, even though they prophesied, cast out demons, and served. He said, you, I, well, they prophesied and cast out demons. He said, I never knew you, right? So we have to know Jesus and we have to follow him. And those who are following Christ will not do certain things. One is, take the mark. They won't do it. Another one is, they won't preach that you're going to get into heaven. They won't lead 
if they, that you're going to get into heaven if you simply refuse the mark because that's a lie and it'll lead people to hell. And they won't send people into a false religious system or they'll be held in bondage because held in bondage because Jesus came to set the captives free. It was his great desire to set people free. And Jesus was greatly angered when the Pharisees and Sadducees even came to get baptized. He said, who told you? He didn't even want them to know. That's how much he didn't care about those people. So, the, and Jesus said, I'm out to do my Father's work. He didn't have his, my ministry, right? People don't like my ministry. He said, I'm out to do my Father's work. Didn't you know that I must do my Father's work? And that is the compilation of every person who has truly received the Spirit of God in their heart is that you desire, because of your love for God, to feed the sheep. You desire that the truth will be known. And you don't like it at all when someone comes out and leads those sheep into the trap, into the snare, into the wickedness of darkness. You don't like it at all. That's the heart of God. That's the heart of God. He raises up those He loves. He feeds and protects those He loves. He nourishes them and He does not like anyone who touches His bride. That's the main reason that Scripture says don't lust after another man's wife. God's really telling you, this is my bride. You don't touch her. You don't come against her. When someone tries to harm the sheep, now the anger of God's going to come against you. And every Christian ought to be angry at William Tapley and all other false prophets who lead into sin, who lead into destruction. This is the man from Modesto. Remind you as always to pray or be defeated.